I love Marie's tattoo animations. How did you come up with the idea to have them come alive? Well, one of the very first drawings of Maui was done by a visual development artist named Sue Nichols. And she did a drawing of Maui with his tattoos. And she had the tattoos literally coming off his body. And when we saw that drawing, we said, that's a great idea. We should really do that. So, so it, as we storyboarded the movie, which happens before it gets animated, some of the storyboard artists came up with different ideas of how they might move around on his body. And in fact, the one particularly, the mini Maui, the one that's really like his Jiminy Cricket, the one that he's kind of closest to, it was a storyboard artist who started doing gags and business and kind of funny things with that tattoo. And we said, that's just really entertaining. And actually, the guy who's animating those tattoos, his name is Eric Goldberg, who does the hand animation of those tattoos. He did the genie in Aladdin, and he did Phil and Hercules, and he's a great hand-drawn animator. So we like the idea of combining hand-drawn animation with the CG animation so we could have the, the best of both worlds. You get to go on the best research trips. Where else in the world would you like to set a movie, and how would you go about researching it? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, that's a good question because uh, you, we say you should pick your projects carefully because our boss, John Lasseter, is a fanatic about research, so we know that, that we, will be, uh, we will be spending a lot of time in, in the world of that movie. But I, uh, I think, yeah, there could be projects set in places like India, you know, Disney's never done a feature there, or uh, Africa, where with people, not so much just lions and things like that. Uh, many landscapes around the world I think would be really rich to explore. So as the years go by, I think you'll see Disney pushing into different parts of the globe and directors getting to go to these nice places, just to, you know, taking advantage of that. When you're thinking up the realm of monsters, how did you manage to keep a lid on your imagination and not go too wild or steer away from the plot? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had to keep a lid on our imaginations because uh, because the realm of monsters actually came a little bit late in the production process. Uh, so we can that, only that afford uh, so many monsters. They said, uh, you get about three monsters. What's your favorite three? We, 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 and we got, uh, we got, um, <clears throat> Yeah, we wanted more monsters, but um, but with, and ingeniously we figured out how to create monsters. Yeah. Actually, um, yeah, we'll give you a that, secret. But the, you know, in the movie there's a, a creature that comes forward uh, to frighten Moana. That's got this mask and is doing all this. That is actually Flash, the sloth from Zootopia, and we put a mask on him because we they were like we can't build another guy. You got to use somebody we've already got. So like let's put Flash in a mask. Yeah, so Flash uh, is there in, and uh, is it. Snowball or yeah, uh, in Frozen there was a marshmallow. There's a marshmallow. Marshmallow is a character with a bunch of spikes, an icy thing that puts the crown on at the end of Frozen. Uh, marshmallow makes an appearance in the realm of monsters again because hey, we've already got him built. If we just color him differently and all that, we could we could afford to put him in there because it was late in production, as Ron said. So, uh, so we had to. That was sort of the lid on our imagination a little bit. We tried to still be imaginative, but within reason, so we could get the movie done in time to be showing it now here.